This video is about the lore surrounding one of the Imperium's most celebrated commanders, Lord Commander Solar Macareus. Macareus was the most celebrated commander of the Ostra Militarum. He was the chief military commander of the Segmentum Solar. He was a High Lord of Terra, proclaimed Imperial War Master, but by the Senatorum Imperialis, and a canonized saint of the Imperial Cult. Between the 392nd year and the 399th year of the 41st millennium, Macarius embarked on a series of conquests at the edge of the Segmentum Pacificus that became known as the Macarian Crusade. This astonishing campaign added nearly 1,000 worlds to the Imperium of Man, and with the exception of the Emperor's Great Crusade, no Imperial leader has led the armies of the Astra Militarum to more victories or won so many worlds for the Imperium. In the aftermath, Macarius's tactics, style, and strategy became textbook examples of how to run an interstellar campaign, and his strategic brilliance has placed him among the greatest military minds to have been produced by humanity, and upheld even as an equal to the genetically engineered Primarchs. Macarius was born the heir of planetary governor Pella in the 356th year of the 41st millennium on the civilized world Donia, located within the Segmentum Pacificus. At that time, the Imperium was recovering from the age of Apasti, and there were many opportunities for an ambitious young officer to prove his worth. From his early 20s, Macarius was already a renowned general of the Astra Militarum. During the suppression of the Roxanne Rebellion, he rescued Lord Commander Solar Phillips, and thereby gained notoriety with the High Lord of Terra. Recognizing his military genius, Phillips took Macarius as a protege and made him his successor. It was during that time that Macarius met the seven future generals that would help realize his future ambitions Sejanus, Borgen, Carassus, Tarka. Arian, Lysander of Coropoli, and Cyrus of Laurentine. In the 386th year, Lord Solar Phillips was killed in the Lamont landings, and Macarius inherited command of the Imperial military forces of the Segmentum Solar. On Holy Terra, the first and last time he visited the Cradle of Humanity, Macarius was inaugurated as the youngest man to ever rise to, to the position of Lord Commander and War Master. Taking di direct command of the new forces under his control, he oversaw a string of early conquests on the worlds of Lands and Morbellum and Jalfrenzi III with his army of loyal Donian regiments. Spurned by these initial successes, Macarius expressed a desire to launch the greatest imperial crusade since the dawn of the Imperium itself. Leveraging his reputation and vast resources at his command, Macarius assembled an imperial armada of unparalleled size since the days when the Emperor still walked among men. The Macarain Crusade began its expedition into the unknown on the world of Macarea in the Segmentum Pacificus. Many of the worlds Macarius intended to conquer had once been part of the Imperium of Man, but they had lost contact during the Age of Apasti, in the early 36th millennium. Other worlds were occupied by Thalzinos, or the followers of Chaos. A brief summary of the notable exploits of the campaign follows. In the first major battle of the Crusade, it was fought against the Cult of the Angel of Fire in the Karsk system. Revealed as a cult dedicated to Zinch, a wounded Macarius faced down the namesake of the cult, a despicable Lord of Change. Rejecting its promises of power and remaining pure, Macarius purged the demon and the cult. In the first year of the crusade, contact was made with the high world of Persepolis, a world that had not known the Emperor's light for 5,000 standard years. Macarius and the first army group joined General Sejanus's second army group to fight across the deserts 
of Gerderosa. There, Macareus discovered the tomb of the ancient imperial explorer Indiagana, the Vargrant, and reclaimed the iconic golden-winged helm that he wore thereafter. This unique piece of war gear also contained a built-in force field. In the second year of the campaign, Macareus fought against Heretic Astartes on the world of Zaga IV. During the fighting, a bolt around embedded itself in Macareus's chest, but failed to explode. The ecclesiarchy confessors that accompanied the crusade declared the omen a miracle and a sign of the imperial's grace and love for Macareus. In the fourth year of the crusade, Macareus's first army group reinforced General Arian's 6th Army Group during the Battle of Thof to decisively crush resistance on that world. Between the 395th and 397th year of the 41st millennium, General Borgen Crassus launched an assault against the technologically advanced human civilization that controlled Adrantus V. Over the course of two years, Crassus's 5th Army Group lost 90% of its combat strength in grinding nutritional warfare while keeping Macareus' forces at bay. Finally, the Lord Solar diverted a comet towards the system, a solution that killed much of the world's population and forced the remnants to accept imperial conquest. Later, in the 397th year, the crusade encountered Orc Wa whose war boss inflicted serious injuries upon Macareus. For a time, the entire crusade stood on a knife's edge, but the Lord Solar recovered and continued into unexplored space. During the first year of the crusade, 100 worlds fell to Macareus's conquest. In the second year, 300 more were added to the Emperor's realm, and by the third year, Nearly 700 planets had fallen to Macareus' armies. Each conquered world had its population either systematically ground down until there were too few natives left to oppose the imperial advance, or was brought under the direct dominion of the Imperium in a conscious imitation of the policies that had created the Imperium during the Great Crusade in the late 30th millennium. In the wake of the advancing armies, missionaries of the ecclesiarchy and teams from the Inquisition spread the faith of the God Emperor, purged heretics, mutants, and witches found amongst the conquered population, and re-established the Emperor's light to fully incorporate the systems within the Imperium of Man. This is in accord with one of the few direct quotes we have from Macareus, which is as follows, quote, the meaning of victory is not to merely defeat your enemy, but to destroy him, to completely eradicate him from living memory, to leave no remnant of his en endeavors, to crush his achievements, and remove all record of his existence. From that defeat, there is no victory. That is the meaning of victory." End quote. The Macarayan Crusade was only halted when it reached the edge of our galaxy deep within the halo zone at the limit of the psychic protection and interstellar navigation provided by the Emperor's Astronomicon. The region beyond was cut off from the Imperium and home to civilizations that had never known the light or peace of the Emperor of Mankind. Without the Astronomicon, Macarius's navigators would have difficulty safely guiding the fleets, and the Astropaths could not guarantee telepathic communication with Imperial space. Despite the challenges, Macareus was determined to press forward, but as preparations were being made, his undefeated armies wavered. After years of intense and grinding battles on hundreds of worlds across thousands of light years, Macareus' troops were tired and fearful of what lay beyond. Their unease was reinforced by scout teams that never returned from the Halo Zone, and others that reported strange phenomena of hunt haunted stars and entire worlds inhabited by what they could only describe as ghosts and spirits. Exhausted and terrified by the great void before him, the soldiers pleaded to Macareus to reconsider his intentions and refused to do their duty. Ultimately, 
Macarius was finally defeated, not by an enemy, but by the fear and frailty of his subordinates. Here, accounts split, and there are different layers of myth, propaganda, and dark secrets describing Macarius's death. In one version, when Macarius learned that he would be unable to conquer any more worlds in the name of the God Emperor, he fell to his knees and wept, a man broken by the human frailties of those around him. Reluctantly, Macarius agreed to conclude his campaign and return to Imperial space. He later died on the voyage home to announce the full extent of his conquest to the Senatorum Imperialis. The exact nature of Macarius' death remains shrouded in mystery. In the official version of Macarius' life and death, he is described as being furious that his troops and commanders refuse to advance and he accused them of betrayal and cowardice. Furious, he locked himself in his stateroom and drank himself into a stupor. When he finally emerged clean and sober once more, he ordered his fleet to set course back to Imperial space. His guardsmen cheered Macarius as a hero and living saint of the Imperium, and his generals breathed a deep sigh of relief. However, Macarius was a frustrated man whose dreams of boundless conquest in the name of the God Emperor had been shattered in the face of simple human frailties and fears that he himself did not share. While outwardly he was resolute, inwardly his will to live was broken by his men's refusal, and on the return journey to Imperial space in the 400th year, Macarius finally succumbed to a jungle fever he had contracted on the world of Juca and his soul ascended to join the Emperor. However, in preparing for the canonization of Macarius, an investigation discovered documents that cast a different picture of his final moments. In this unofficial version, Macarius was inflicted by various plagues during a siege on the world of Loki. It was there that Macarius prosecuted a campaign against a former general named Richter, who had turned to the service of Nurgle. Exposure to these plagues meant that Macarius had only weeks, if not days, to live when he gathered his personal forces for a last ditch assault. While Macarius managed to kill Richter, he and an inquisitor named Drake died shortly afterwards by the hand of a cultist assassin. But even that is not the whole story, as there are whispers within the record of an even darker truth. Knowing Macarius' value as a hero and symbol of the Imperium, it would be impossible to let him die to Nurgle's corruption. Instead, the Imperium needed a hero, dying gloriously in battle. Based on some accounts, Inquisitor Drake had fed strategic and tactical information to Richter to stall Imperial progress on Loki. According to a lone survivor, after Richter's death, an official Assassinorum agent, masquerading as an Imperial stormtrooper, killed Macarius, then proceeded to permanently silence Drake as well. Regardless of how Macarius actually died, his men deeply mourned the passing of their general and revered him as a saint of the Imperial Creed and a second coming of the ancient Primarchs. Macarius's body was returned to Macarea, where the crusade had originated. A massive state funeral was held there for the Lord Commander Solar, which was attended by the High Lords of Terra, the Cardinals of the Ecclesiarchy, the Magi of the Adeptus Mechanicus, and many other important figures of the Imperium wishing to pay their respects to one of the greatest leaders ever known. A million men led the funeral procession, and a hundred Imperial Guard Generals laid their swords on the ornate or sarcophagus. Not long after his death, the Adeptus Ministorum officially canonized Macarius as a saint of the Imperial cult. The planet Macarea was transformed into a shrine world of the Adeptus Ministorum, dedicated to the former Lord Solar, and millions of pil pilgrims from across the Imperium have made the long journey every year to visit the Grand Imperial Cathedral erected over his final resting place. Unfortunately, 
Macarese's accomplishments were tarnished, for upon his death his generals carved out their own personal domains from amongst the conquered worlds. The resulting civil strife lasted almost 70 standard, standard years and is now known as the Macarene Heresy. Ultimately, the Imperium sent a new expedition, this time composed of the Adeptus Astartes, to restore Imperial authority. Macarese's name is honored throughout the Imperium. The Imperial Navy battleship, Lord Sosolar Macarese, is named after this general, as is the battleship Macarea Victrix, and a dictator class cruiser active during the Gothic War. His name also graces the Macarese heavy tank and the planet Macarea that formerly existed in the Cadian system. <laughs>